done. And that, that was always, you know, impressive to me that it was just, and really the, the hardest things, he thought, ah, that's nothing. I remember uh, thinking that, uh, well, when um, Noah was having a little tune-up surgery, and it was microsurgery with, uh, you know, micro instrumentation, and it had to be just so. But when Nathan was telling me about it, it didn't seem like anything. It's just going to be a, a day at the hospital. And, you know, that's just the way he, he thought of things. This is all doable. Whatever it is, it's doable. And, you know, and he was, uh, most of the time that I knew him, he was pretty weak and pretty tired. And the last few months or so, you know, he, he just got so lean and so weak and stumbly. But I, I never uh, noticed him being irritable about it. And I thought that was impressive because even with Noah, you know, the demands of a three-year-old, um, that was a characteristic that I thought was purely grace uh, that he could, you know, keep moving. He really, he did, he figured out how to keep moving. Um, and now I, I read something in, in the scriptures talking about, uh, this was in the Old Testament about the days of, uh, before the flood, and I had to text uh, Nathan about this. Uh, I was reading it long and how things were so uh, violent in the in the world, and so um, the Lord had repented that He had created things like He did. And He, th there's one little verse that just sort of stood out at me and said, "But Noah." But Noah found favor yes. with the Lord. <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> you know, I think of uh, <clears throat> Noah in this case. I think, you know, how would we say Noah has found favor? Because we're you know, at his father's funeral. But I know that Noah when he looks at these videos and hears this about his dad, he's going to see that uh, his, dad, his dad's illness actually created uh, three years of strong bonding that most father-sons don't have. Um, <clears throat> he's going he's gonna to think, Well, he's going to know that fathers can do it basically anything. And uh, that fathers are very capable. Fathers are, you know, do what they need to do for their son. So he's got, he's found favor. And uh, I know that'll be obvious to him as it grows. So I couldn't leave that part out about uh, <clears throat> the scripture because I think that the Lord showed me that Noah had found favor. Hi. Um, okay, so my favorite memory of Nathan is one time I called him, and it was about 11.30 at night, and I thought that they would already be asleep. And I had a bag full of soaking wet clothes that I had just gotten out of the washing machine and I had nowhere to dry them. And there was so much stuff going on and I was so upset and I called him and I was bawling my eyes out and I was like, can I just come use your dryer? And I got over there and we put the clothes in the dryer and he, you know, they, he just had this way about him. I could stand up here and tell you a million amazing, wonderful things about Nathan, but you all already know. I mean, any person that ever met him, even for a minute, just saw that, that light and that joy that just, that he just was. And uh, I remember we were sitting around and uh, I was still upset and he said, well, why don't we play a board game to get your mind off of things? And so I was kind of like, well, you know, okay. And he was like, well, we can play life. And I said, I think I'll lose because I was all, you know, mopey and depressed and everything. And he looked at me and he said, how could you? Like, 
how could you lose? Like, you've already won. How can you lose? It's just a game. Like, how can you lose? And, and I realized, like, that's the kind of person that, that Nathan was. And we've had a thousand reminiscing stories about him and, you know, remember this time and remember that time. And, you know, to be able to just look at all these great times with such happiness and joy and to remember the feelings that he made us feel and everything like that. And it's like I was telling Des and everything the other night. Even now, even now, he's still affecting so many people in so many positive ways. It's like, you know, you talk about your cup runs over and his cup has just run over and over and over and over and over into so many people's lives in so many different ways that, that I just didn't even think it was possible for any single person to have that kind of influence in the world. And that was it. He didn't just influence my life. He didn't just influence Desiree's life. He didn't just influence his mom's life, his family, and his son. Like, he didn't just influence us. Like His light shines brighter than any other light I've ever seen. And, and even now, he still is just shining so bright. And, you know, he's... It's like... I'm, of course I'm sad because I miss him so much in so many ways. And the closer we got, the more it was just, you know, like I always called him my brother because that's what he was to me, was, was like a brother. That's the way that he cared about people. And so of course I'm sad because I miss him, but to see the way that he's touched so many lives and the way that he even still continues to, like, I'm just, I'm just happy and blessed to be able to say that, that I got to be part of that, and I got to be part of his life, and I guess that's it, but I know that everyone else here loves him, and because I know that everyone here loves him, and we all share that love, I want to say that I love all of you guys for being here, because Nathan touched everyone in such a familiar family way, and... And so I feel like every person that loved him and every person that he loved, like we're all family. And uh, he's always gonna be one of the most amazing people. He's always gonna be one of the most amazing people that's ever existed. He is an angel here that walked on the earth and he accomplished more in his life. Even if we feel like he's been taken from us too soon, he accomplished more in the time that he was here than most people could in a thousand years. What a great man, and how lucky and blessed are we to have gotten to know that. Okay, so I'm not really comfortable with this whole microphone stage thing, but uh, <laughs> there's one story I wanted to share. Um, I was sitting at my apartment one day, and uh, I got a phone call from Nathan, and uh, I asked him, hey chief, how's it going? And uh, he sounded very distressed. He said, man, I need you to come over to my house right away. I said, is everything okay? He said, no, man, I, I need your help. I'm down in the garage. Just come over, and uh, I'll be down there. I said, okay. So I hopped in the car. I raced across town. I got out, and uh, I noticed that the garage door was still a little open, so I walked inside. And there Nathan sat inside of his stool with a belt sander attached to the front of his pants. Uh, Apparently, he thought it was a good idea to hold a board in between his legs and try to sand it, and it did not work out very well for him. Uh, as you all know, Nathan was really good with his hands. I mean, I'm sure you've seen their house. It's beautiful. Uh, there's not a whole lot of things that Nathan couldn't handle, and uh, I think that was the only time I saw any kind of fear in his eyes <laughs> was whenever he, I looked down at that belt sander. But uh, I'm really thankful that I got to, to know Nathan and Desiree and uh, all their family even the ones that I don't know. I'm sure you're all great people if you're family of Nathan's. And uh, that's it. Well, I remember going to his house most of the time. I, would, I always wanted to go over there because I didn't know what to expect when I went over there. He always had something new planned or he, he was wanting to do something with me. So I didn't know this time he had, he had planned a surprise for me and my sister. Well, he had taken us to Dollywood with, with uh, him, 
me, my sister, his wife, and Noah. And uh, we were in the room. Destiny doesn't know that we're going to Dollywood yet. Where she's sitting there over there on the other side of the bed, getting getting ready and everything, getting ready to leave for the next day. And uh, he's like, "Well, I go over there and I say, well, when are you going to tell her?" He's like, "Don't tell her yet. She's looking at us like we're crazy." And he goes, he says, don't tell her we're going to Dollywood yet. And he yells it out at everybody. And he's, he was worried about me, Noah, or Desiree spoiling it. And he says, oh, gosh, I just said it, didn't I? <laughs> and that was one of, the, one of the funniest things I'd ever seen him say before, that reaction that he had. And that's all. Pretty good. Thank you. We met Desiree and Nathan, as well as um, the guys in the back there, back at uh, church. It's been a while. Ursa was two, three, three, I guess. No, it was Drew that was two, sorry. It's been a while. <laughs> And they were just engaged or just met or something like that. But um, anyway, uh, there were so many college kids running around there, and, and I had just gotten to meet them. And um, I was so excited that all these kids was coming to church. And it was, <clears throat> it was just something else. But um, Desiree, I'm still praying still writing things down for you so but the Lord has a song for you okay <clears throat> Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the nights, lead me on. To the light, precious Lord, take my hand, lead me home. When my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near when my life is almost gone hear me cry so sorry. hear my cry hear my call oh my hand lest i fall Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, 
I come to Thee. Amen. I thought I saw one more. Maybe not. Okay. I just wanted to tell one story because I don't know how many characteristics we can talk about in one day that Nathan possessed that were just amazing and more so than most men that we know. I want to talk about his selflessness. Um, I was pregnant with our son Judah. I think I was probably six or seven months along and we had to redo the room that we were going to put him in for his nursery. Now, we uh, lived with my in-laws at the time. We were all kind of having a hard time, and the three of us were going to be in one small room, but in taking down the wallpaper in this room, we realized that there was a lot of water damage and black mold in the room, and I was heartbroken because it was way too much money for us to get somebody to come in to fix it, and I didn't really know anybody who would be able to. Well, I called Des, talking to her about it, and Nathan was over there the next day. And he and Corey cut out these big pieces of the wall, and they fixed it, and my father-in-law was not very nice about the whole thing, but Nathan's presence calmed him down, and they ended up being the best of friends a couple of hours later. Um, I don't know what... I would have done without that peace in my pregnancy. Um, and he, he gave that to me. His selflessness, his wanting to help, and he was that way with all of his friends, and I would assume his family too. He was there for everybody. You call on him, he's there. Didn't matter how he was feeling. Most likely he'd lie to you about how he's feeling if he was feeling bad anyway. Always had a smile on his face. He was always the first to encourage you. He's always the first to remind you of the love of Christ. He was always the first to carry your backpack for you so that you could get past what you were dealing with. And I will always be thankful for him and what he was able to show of his faith in the Lord because if it wasn't for our friendship, I don't know if I would have the faith that I do. I saw Christ shine so brightly every time I talked to Nathan that it, it's impossible not to have known that Christ was with him and inside him and that he lived that life every day. And I, I am blessed to know him, as is everybody else in this room and maybe even all the other people that weren't able to come. This passing has changed this world, I think. Um, Haley said it. Pastor Bob said it. A lot of other people have said it. He just... He was so much bigger than himself. Um, Des said that, it's another reference to a TV show, but there's this machine called a TARDIS. That's just, it was set like a police box, a very small box, and you open it up and get inside of it, and it's this huge, like, other room world. And that's how he was. He was just so much bigger on the inside. For him to be so small, for him to fight so hard, just to 